Hi everybody, welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and podcast. It seems like such a long time ago, but we are finally back with a match preview. Premier League football will return this weekend and Newcastle will play Manchester United at St. James's Park. I'm Scott, I'm your host for this one. And this week we are joined by Roger, Joe and Daryl. Daryl, how are you my friend? Um, feeling much better than I was over the last few weeks, mate. Um, had a bit of lurgy. We're not sure if it's COVID or man flu or God knows whatever it is, but probably back to about 95% full fitness now, so raring to go. Nice. Nearly match fit for the weekend. What Just like Callum here? Wilson. Just Aye. like Callum Wilson. Well, Joe, how are you, my friend? I'm doing fantastic, mate. Yes, good to be back. You're right. I just felt like it's been way too long since one of these. Long. Yeah, no, doing Callum. well. Doing well. Looking forward nice. to chatting. And uh, Mr. Banks, all the way over there in Toronto, how are you doing, mate? I'm good, yeah, good, thank you. Nice to be on the All Would Be A Good Faces podcast, you know? <laughs> yes, you've got a... You've got a <laughs> Daryl's, Daryl's joining them, Daryl's mm-hmm. joining them. You've got, you've got a, four, a four beard special this week, well, what more that. could you ask well, for? Well, now that's... <laughs> yes, well, welcome, welcome to the cult, Daryl, the cult of the beard. Um, yes. You can my... never leave. It's a prestigious honour to hold and you can hold it for as long as you keep that Mac 3 away from your face. Anyways, before we get started with the preview, uh, I'll just have to let everybody know that the Gallagher Shots Match Preview is brought to you by Magpin. Magpin are the go-to site for high quality and unofficial enamel pin badges of Newcastle players, legends and retro kits. Their website is magpinbadges.bigcartel.com. Right, so as I mentioned, uh, Sunday, 2nd of April, day after April Fools, which is nice. Don't like to play games on that uh, on that day. We play and host Manchester United live at St. James's Park. It's a 4.30 kickoff, uh, and it is live on Sky for everybody in the UK. Uh, I'm guessing, Roger, you'll get it on Dazon or Dazon, whatever it's called over there. Um, uh, no, um, luckily the house I've moved into has got like IP TV, so it'll be on one of the various different channels. We, we do get Sky, like I've got Sky, so yeah, it'll be awesome. Somehow. And it'll be on Fireplay for me and probably on tons of other channels because like I said, it is on Sky. Um, Man U, obviously we all know about them given you know the like them. last month down at Wembley. Um, we don't like them at all. We are going out for revenge. Hit them where it hurts. Leapfrog them because they will. They are currently in third in the league. And uh, given our goal difference is so good, uh, if we were to get a result this weekend, we would leapfrog both themselves and Spurs uh, into third place. Uh, so that should be nice. Uh, they're currently sitting on two wins, two defeats and one loss in the last five. And obviously that loss was a 7-0 uh, spanking uh, from Liverpool. Uh, Daryl, we'll come to you first, mate. Um, are we going for a 7 0 victory? Are we going? Um, I wouldn't quite go as far as seven, Scott. Um, I'd like to think we'll definitely extract that revenge we're all talking about. Um, I mean, what more? It doesn't even need to do a team talk. That's, that's just the team talk is go out and sort out, you know, get revenge for the final and, and sort it all out. Um, I'd like yeah. to think we'll. Get a good win. I think it could be quite a close game, actually. Um, we'll get onto it later when we talk about players that are and aren't available on both sides. But they've got quite a big gap in midfield with the uh, key player missing that we'll get to. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so I think it'll be quite a close game. But I'd like to see us edge the win. Yeah, well, you mentioned you mentioned uh, a key player, and there is a, a a big Brazilian gap in the middle of their midfield uh, in Casemiro. Uh, Roger, obviously, he was quite an integral part of them at Wembley. Um, is he going to be a big miss for them, do you think, coming up to this game? And you think Scott McTominay could potentially fill his shoes uh, given the, uh, the performance he's had the much, over the last week for his uh, country? The, the much maligned Scott McTominay on New yeah. Twitter. Um, <laughs> that I, like, it's great when it's great when like football brings around these little like fixtures where. You know the rumours have been circulating since really I don't know probably about a year maybe or since the since the window so at least that, yeah. um, that you know there's there's significant interest in uh, with Tom and A but 
Um, yeah, I mean, he's a he's he's a quality player. Um, although he, I don't know, like they had that great run, obviously, which we sort of suffered the tail end of um, in the final. Yeah. But a team like Man United have got players to come in and you know fill in positions and. You know, McTominay has done well for Scotland these last few day, uh, last few games. Um, so someone like that can come in. You know, I don't really yeah. rate Fred, but for the position that he might play, he's, you know, it's you know as a destructor. You know, he's he's decent. So it's more probably rather than his 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 playing ability, it's his, it's his knowledge, know how that sort of thing that they'll probably miss more and dealing with hopefully. A really, really intimidating, um, a really intimidating stadium and a really intimidating crowd. That's hopefully full of drink, full of raj, and just really, you know, booing every touch and really going after after the players uh, of Man United. Hopefully, so he will be a bit. I think he will be a miss for them, but we need to really, really take advantage of it and really put yeah. it on them. Yeah, I think a lot of the fans will be seeking. At least some form of, uh, of of revenge this weekend. Whether we get it on the field or not is another story. But Joe yeah. Rogers touched on it a little bit there that you know the crowd are probably going to play a huge part in um, in this one this weekend in terms of the hostile atmosphere that we're all expecting to give Manu. Um, do you think for the Manu players that'll have any effect on them at all, or do you think it's water off a duck's back for them and they're all used to that sort of thing and they'll just get on with their jobs? No. Uh... The St. James's Park atmosphere always makes a difference, and I'm not just saying that as a cliche as a Newcastle fan. You hear these stories about players after, you know, after, even current players, they'll say that that intimidating away uh, atmospheres do make a lot of difference, and it can shy a lot of players away from the ball. Now, I'm, listen, Man United, they're an experienced side. They've been here, they've done it. They know the drill. I expect them to come and be very professional and, and do what they do. But we can't underestimate a drunken Raj Jordy crowd. Like, that is an absolute behemoth. So, yeah. no, we, yeah, we, I think we have to make it as hostile as possible. The um, the scars are still very fresh uh, from last month. And whilst it won't make up for the cup final loss, it'll do a, you know, it'll, it'll be a hell of a step towards leap like you say leapfrogging them and going towards Champions League qualification. So it's a yeah. huge game. Absolute huge game. It is a huge game. Roger, would you would you say, you know, final aside, this is probably one of our biggest games of the season given what's at stake? Yeah, I mean we've got like an absolute match sandwich coming up like with these two two games against uh, Tottenham and Man United at home and then uh, West Ham, Brentford and Villa, possibly yeah. in that order, I think. In between, you know, it's like, you know, I think we've got 13 games. The rest of me only got sort of 10, 11 games left. It's like, you know, it is like the business end of the season now. And it's a, it is a huge game. And I think, like, you know, <clears throat> it's really important that we try and not get too excited as it, well, the players and the fans, as in thinking, oh, yeah, well, you know, out for revenge and all that sort of stuff. And I don't think Eddie Howe will sort of lead with that as a as a um a rallying call to the players. I think he'll be factual and he'll be, you know, he'll he'll put the facts on the table that like we are one of the best teams in the league so far this season. They've got what we want more than the beat us last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to it and I, yeah, I think I think the players will have the right attitude. Uh, going into the game so let's see let's see indeed well there are a few injuries to report from the Man U side obviously Christian Eriksen is still out and there's a couple of long term ones which I'm not going to include the likes of Donny van der Beek and all that but um, the I think it's the new central midfielder they brought in in January Sabitza he's out uh, Martial Varane Rashford although according to the um, the site that I used to find out who's injured they're all potentially return date is Sunday so you know, Rush they're still on will. paper out, but yeah, we'll Rush I think yeah, we'll be playing. He will 100% um, play that game. But Martial and Sabitzer, I mean, with, with Casemiro being out, Daryl, 
Sabita would was brought in to kind of fill that role. We've got mm-hmm. Ericsson out as well. Um, there could be a little light in centre midfield, which could play into our hands. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've talked there about having the options when Casemiro isn't there, it, it, what's available right now. And, you know, you're looking at basically Fred and McTominay. And they are, you know, in, in, in a whole, they are lights. But, like, it's going to be a really interesting battle in the middle of the park on Sunday. Um, I mean, obviously, we'll be getting on to, to our boys shortly. But the, the selection on our side is going to be so crucial in how we control the midfield. Um and I think that will influence a change in midfield as well, just to bring in a bit of muscle. We all know who I'm talking about when I say a bit of muscle here. And um, bring in that bit of muscle. And our our man who is our own destroyer, as um Roger kindly put it about Casemiro and McTominay earlier on. Um and it's gonna be interesting in the middle. I think up front I think it'll be largely unchanged. I do think the change in midfield may force a change in our front three as well. Um, but I would like to think that the back five is that automatically that you know that one that automatically picks itself straight away, the 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 same consistent back five that we've had for most of the season. Yeah, but we'll move on to Newcastle. Obviously, there are a few injuries on the books, but we've seen players who are supposedly injured in training in the videos today, Joe. Um, obviously, we know about Miguel Almiron. How said six weeks. According to the bloke on Twitter, Almiron said he's fit, so <laughs> we'll find out what happens yeah, at the yeah, weekend yeah. there. Um, obviously, we are recording the football press conference. Um, but you've got Almiron, Anthony Gordon, you've got Maxi, who's potentially mm-hmm. out, Nick Pork, who pulled out the England squad, and you've got Sven Botman, who had a dodgy curry. Hopefully, he's re- recovered from that. Um, you know, we've there's a, if, if all those players are out, that's a, that's a big core of our, our starting 11 and, and some of our, you know, fringe players as well um fingers crossed that's not the case but do you think as as roger said we've got the um the personnel to you know overcome anything that man you might throw at us given you know who's potentially out yeah like the the names that you mentioned there i'm expecting pretty much all of them to to be available i mean mickey will be out no matter what Twitter says but uh, yeah it'd be good if, if Gordon's back in contention obviously Joe Linton's back um, and it's a fascinating dilemma to see what's going to happen because there's not been too many times a season where we've had uh, you know, all of these players really fit at once and in the form that they've all been in at once as well um, even when they've all been fit there's always been at least one person who's just not quite hitting the height but you know now you've got Joe Willock who's our creative outlet in midfield. Bruno is undroppable. Longstaff is an absolute workhorse. And for all we can say that maybe some of his technical um, skills are limited, you need that kind of player with that engine in midfield. <clears throat> so it's it's really going to be uh, intriguing. And we all know what Joe Linton brings to the side, whether he plays in the middle, when he plays, whether he plays out left. <sighs> to me personally, um, I think it's a toss of a, I, th- I think I think is either a toss of a coin whether he goes back in or how leans into the fact that we need that physicality in midfield. Um, even with the likes of Casemiro out, you know we're, we're going to need that that drive. So who makes way? I don't know, but I think I think we will see a few more options off the bench. Um, as for the as for the back four, I do find it quite. I, f- I find the whole back target thing very fascinating. This. Uh, Eddie Howe almost kind of teased us a few weeks ago. I can't remember who he came on against. It was in the last few minutes. Someone someone remind me. Um, but he came on for the last few minutes of one of the games a few weeks back. And everyone thought, oh, so this is Eddie Howe sort of, you know, reintroducing him slowly back into the team. Maybe he's realizing that we need that balance. And uh, yeah. and we've not seen him since, have we? So, I'm expe- yeah, I am expecting Dan Burr to start. But I just find it really fascinating that he's... Um, He's not sort of experimenting with that yet. I still don't think Man United is the time to do that with the you know a, a experiment with the more attacking left back. But be interesting to see if, if Matty Target does get any any time on the pitch. Yeah, there's always been that argument of um, if Matt Target starts. Well, it, it's if you play Saint Maximum on the left, you've got to put Matt Target in because he doesn't do the tracking back. But it's mm. kind of not been a problem. Dan Burns been okay because he's getting cover from the central midfield. He's been fantastic. And yeah. to be fair to St. Maximum, he's been tracking back a little bit as well and helping out when he can. Um, yeah. Roger, the, the big question is the, the 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 attacker in the side. Obviously, we all know the form that Isak's in, but he has been 
away on international duty. Yeah, um, I think he only played. What's it? It's Wednesday, so he only played on Monday. I think wasn't it when uh when Sweden when Sweden played last. Um, is that enough time for him to recover and get back into the swing of things at Newcastle, or do you think Eddie Howe might rest him a little bit and, and bring back Callum Wilson, who's had a spell on the sidelines uh, in recent games? I think, yeah, I think Isak will start. Uh, like, I'm really, really confident that, that that'll be the case. I think, you know, Wilson's bang out of form. I think Howe's possibly learned his lesson from the cup final of starting with Wilson, and he didn't really offer anything, you know, um, unfortunately. So I think, you know, Isak will, there would be, you've got to think from Man United's point of view, like who would they rather play against? They'd rather play against Wilson every day of the week and yeah. twice on Sunday. So, you know, it's I'm a no-brainer for me. That, yeah, I'm current. Well, I'd argue, the two, uh, I'd argue I'd, I'd play Isak over Wilson. If, if we're both in form, I maybe play them together, but I'm a greedy. But <laughs> I would start. I would start Isak every time. But I think, yeah. I think it's really important that coming back to like obviously this midfield slight dilemma. I've just quickly written down sort of what team I would go with. I would definitely bring Joe Linton back in straight away. I think we need to bully them and like really let them know that they're in a game. And I think yeah. if they look at the team sheet and they say Joe Linton straight back in with. Longstaff, Bruno, Willock, and I would, I would start Murphy to be honest with you because he's 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 in good form as well. Um, you know all of those players. Casemiro's out, so you put you put jo- um, and I said Jocelyn there. We'll come to him later, maybe. Uh, you put Joe Linton up against like Bruno, Sabitzer, McTominay. He dominates them all, you know, yeah. and. I'd be really, really surprised if Joe Linton didn't come straight back. And I know it's not, it's not really Howe's habit of doing that, but it's such a crucial game. And I think Joe Linton will be chomping at the bit. Hopefully, he doesn't get sent yeah. off again. But we'll see. But yeah, so would, would, yeah, sorry, would that for you, Roger, be a, um, a, a dropping of Joe Willock in favour of Joe Linton, or would no, you put Joe Linton in I, on the left? I would. Keep Joe, I would Joe's Willock's in form. I would yeah. probably drop ASM and then. Because then later on in the game, you know, likelihood is they'll play Varane. You've got Wan Bissaka and Shaw. I think if you get to 60 minutes in the game, 65, 70 minutes, and you're bringing on the option possibly of ASM, possibly of, um, uh, what's his name? Claire Balding. Uh, yeah. Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> um, I think you bring, you, you look at the bench and you're like, it's no longer Matt Ritchie on there. It's, you know, these are what what best players. So I would, yeah. I'd be, I'd be tempted if I did play football manager and if I was Newcastle manager to have that bench there and be like, this is what we can unleash once we kind of win the physical battle mm-hmm. and then into in turn the mental battle and then bring on these players to just, yeah, tear them to shreds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Happy, Dean. I'd like to say as well that not just the uh, strength battle but the aerial battle as well. You've got Martinez who's there, who's five foot fuck all and. Don't get me wrong, he's a fantastic <laughs> centre-back. He's a little raggy and he does get stuck in. But if you got Isak, Joe Linton, um, yeah. God, who else is tall? Uh, Bobman, Stan Burn, all the back, Bobman, yeah, uh, Nick Pope. Newcastle Giants. Yeah, yeah. So them. I think, in, 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 as Roger said, if you have Murphy starting, you've got him whipping those crosses in um, from the yeah. right-hand side, which... You're expecting Isak to get onto, and obviously Trippier's deliveries. We've seen that they've been quite successful as well. So I think that is definitely an area to exploit. Um, even if not for the first balls to, um, like for, to go straight for goal, like at least you know not once to knock down uh, to yeah. cause some havoc in the box. So it's, um, I think it's definitely something we need to look at exploiting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And obviously, goalkeepers, uh, we will have Nick Pope for this one, hopefully, if he's over his slight knock that took him out of the England side. But we'll see. Um, maybe he just doesn't like play against Man U, um, and that's what it is. Uh, we'll come to uh, predictions, Daryl. I'll start with you. Um, yeah, what's your prediction? Well, firstly, I'll just say that I agree with everything that uh, Roger said there about the selection as well. I think that's exactly what will happen. I think if ASM's anything less than 100%, then he'll be straight on the bench. 
and it'll be the combination. It'll be that combination of Joe Linton and Joe Willock that we know can interchange as well if it needs to, yeah. just to switch things around a bit yeah. in midfield. Um, in terms of the game itself, I'm going to go with, like I said before, I think it'll be a close game. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Newcastle win. 2-1 win. I think yeah. um, it's going to be really important that... You know, when if you if we all think back to the cup final, Man United did to us what we've been doing to a lot of teams this season. I think it's up to us as a crowd to get onto that and and, and really put them into a, into a corner, um, and, and get them back in their shells, um, really get them hiding away and um to to make sure that we're the ones that are forcing ourselves onto the game rather than the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Joe, mate. Let's yeah, I think it's gonna be. Fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be an absolutely fascinating game. I think it's going to be a very different game to what we saw at the, uh, the cup final. We have a different, we have a you know change in personnel, especially up front, and we're starting to adapt to a different style of play, which I think will work to our advantage far more than what it did a few weeks ago. Uh, and yeah, with Man United not having Casemiro, it's, it is a big, big difference. Even though it's just one player, it is a big difference. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not too confident getting the win, but I think we are so good at home and our defence is so resolute for the most part, I think we'll limit their chances. So I'm going to go for 1-1 um, and I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a really good game for both sides. Awesome. Roger, what is your prediction uh, for this one, Nate? I'm going to go 3-1 win. I think um, if you look back at Man United's last couple of games, obviously the, the last league game they played was against Southampton at home. Yep. Poor performance. Casemiro sent off. Then the Fulham game was a really weird game where it really got lucky you know, there, didn't it? Kind of, yeah, Fulham were you know Fulham were pushing them all the way, and you know it it just breaks me heart that you know Man United were on that great run, and we got the back end of it. And like if, if we'd only played them a few weeks later, like <laughs> they're not like they're not a great side, you know. He's saying about Martinez, he's a little, you know, he's a little skip rass, but he's, you know, he's a decent defender. He's a good <laughs> defender, but like, you know, he'll get involved in little things and we can dominate him. Varane is a an excellent centre back, but like, is he going to want to be running into places? Hopefully, that Isak wants to take take him into. You know, Shaw's a good player. I do like Shaw. To be fair, Wan Bissaka is not going to like having Joe Linton or Murphy running at him, going at them. So. Like, I think it's there for us, you know, but I do think, you know, Rashford will probably play and will probably score because he's, he's in great form and he's a great player, absolutely exceptional player. Um, so I'm going to go 3-1, I'm reasonably confident. I think we'll go 1-0 behind and then we'll, the, the volume will be turned up and we'll, we'll, we'll have a comeback win. Come back win. Do you think it'll be free, free, um, free-flowing like it was with the Man City game? <clears throat> yeah, I do. I think I think it's gonna be like I think we're gonna the, the both teams will go with each other because both teams know what's at stake. Man United yeah. wanna kinda of secure that they wanna kinda of secure that third place. We're in the hunt and I think it we're a, I think we're a dangerous team for a lot of we're a dangerous side for a lot of other teams in the in the league and if you know if, if we can get all of the bits right in our game like I think we, you know, we can really, really go at them, and I think yeah. they'll they'll give us the opportunity yeah. to to do that. You know, like yeah. when West Ham come up or when other teams come up, they want to shut up shop. But Man United will see this as an opportunity, right? We can almost put Newcastle to the sword. Let's end that season. Let's end that. You know, because really, we win that game and we get some fa- favorable results in the three away games. Forget fourth, looking at third. Do you mm-hmm. know, like so they want to. Things up, doesn't a, it? Yeah, yeah, it's really a huge game. yeah. Absolutely and I'll tell you what, game, so. uh, I'll tell you what, I think most Man United fans would take a draw right now. Yeah, yeah, of course yeah. they would. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. when you just consider not to not to go into the whole look how much we've improved, but when you consider that statement in itself, you're right. We are we are we are a serious contender for, for the top four yeah. spaces. Yeah, and the sure. teams around us know it now. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm with I'm with Roger. I think it'll be three one as well. I think you know these players will go into this with nothing to lose, um, with pride to regain from that final, uh, a point to prove as well. I think. Uh, I think the uh, you know we we did relatively well at Old Trafford to get a nil nil draw earlier this season, and then you know the final was the final. Um, I think these these this group of lads will want to put a performance at least. 
Um, and I think if we do put a performance on, we score goals. Like we we're, we're pretty unstoppable when we when we get in the flow. And I think, like Roger said, the the crowd getting behind them will only spur that on even more. I don't know what War Flags are doing. I don't know if anything's happening this week with War Flags. I haven't Flags. seen anything, very, to be honest. Like, very quiet. Quiet, yeah. It may just yeah. be the, so the maybe quiet, it'll be something, usual surface. Yeah, the um, there were, yeah maybe it'll be the, the surface. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's nice to have Premier League football back. It was nice to log into me fantasy, fantasy football and think, ooh, I've got stuff to do this week as opposed to just forgetting about it. <laughs> uh, Scott, um, me and you are joining at the top, man. Well, we are. pretty much, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Gallagher Trots members uh, FPL, it's it's myself and Joe. Not that it's fixed or anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, going at it. Neat. Double game week, though, so I hope you got your bench boosts in, whoever's watching. Um, uh, well, this isn't well, the FPL show. Us. It's a different video. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know. Well, Roger, you had um, who you had the um, Casemiro, not Casemiro. Cancello. No, I, uh, what's his name? Uh, Cancelo. <laughs> I had Cancelo. I had like two months <laughs> before we left. <laughs> so it was like it was like when I logged in, there was like a geek red red flag saying like, "Oh, he's not in the game." So I was like, "All oh, right, all right." But I think like <laughs> we could be looking by the end of the Tottenham game at home, Champions League could be in the bag. Could be, wow. it could be like it really could be, really you. Could be. especially could with, be. with with the way Tottenham's going with their leadership at the moment. Um, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. obviously, we all know that Conte is gone. Um, you know, I don't think they're going to get a new manager in until the end of the season. I don't think that's going to happen, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. we'll see how those players could react be on, to that. Man. What, what I would say as well off. is that you know, if Joe was right and we do get a draw on Sunday. Then we got that bonus. That West Ham game is our catch-up game, so we can still overtake yeah. Man United and still be on level par with them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have uh, this is the Brighton game this season somewhere as well, isn't it? Yeah, exciting times, yeah. exciting times all around. Yes, we are calling the, the tail end of the season, and there is a plethora of content available for everybody on this Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and podcast channel. Let's not forget about those. Uh, you've got the Always Smiling Faces podcast. Uh, extra times back. Uh, Roger, are we doing anything this week? Or are we, uh, we um, this I'm going to do it every, every, every two weeks. So nice. um, we'll be back next Thursday or Friday. Next Thursday or Friday. Excellent. Obviously, you've got these match previews. You've got the match reactions. You've got the short videos that uh, Chris records in the studios with Mark and Decker or both. Um you know, check all of those out. And then on the podcast side of things, uh, myself and Joe do a bi-weekly show called Canny Chatter. So if you haven't checked that out, get yourself on the podcast and listen to the audio of that. Um, loads of content for everybody. And uh, all that we ask in return is that you just scroll down from this video and hit the little subscribe button. It's the red one. You can't miss it. Uh, and if you've done that and you want to know when these videos go live, hit the little uh, bell icon next to it. And while you're down there, help this video reach other people other fans hit the thumbs up button and it'll uh, one of them. just put this in the, one feed, of in the feed of of, uh, of other newcastle fans and it'll probably hit my new fans as well um because it has been doing for other teams in previous weeks uh, if you want to go one step further uh, we do have a membership program uh, it's 2.99 a month that gets you early access to all of this content uh in glorious high definition uh, as well as uh, access to the telegram group uh, which is a it's like a whatsapp group chat with about 120 uh, like-minded Newcastle United fans from all over the planet. Uh, there's not they're not just local to the Newcastle area, as myself and Roger can contest. Um, we're from everywhere. We're here. We're there. We're everywhere. Um, but yeah, you get access to that uh, as well as joining the members only FPL league if you want to. If you got more points than myself and Joe, you could take us over and, and sneak in right at the end there and win it. Who knows? No, Anyways. No, no. No, not happening. Okay, <laughs> no, fine. We'll, we'll yeah, not share yeah. that. Code, I need this. Uh, I need this. Scott. The <laughs> I need this validation. All that's left from me is to thank uh, Joe, thanks Daryl, and thank you Roger. It's been a pleasure, Cheers, always, guys. lads. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll uh, we'll go into this one brimming with con- confidence. Hopefully, we'll get a result. We'll get ourselves back in those Champions League positions and uh, get ourselves a good foundation for the upcoming. It's three away games, isn't it, in a row, which uh, nobody yeah, likes. But uh, gonna yeah, get we'll yeah, set ourselves up for those with a nice win. Well, let's hope he does that and only gets a yellow card, Daryl. Oh, uh, we yeah, don't I... want any red cards for Jordan no anymore. Yeah. But thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Ta-da. Cheers, Ta-da. everyone. Bye-bye.